Now, I may, I'm, I may get around to preaching, but uh, probably will. But I just want to be sensitive. Tuckers, can y'all come back up here tonight? I know this wasn't planned, but uh, I feel like the Lord's trying to do some stuff tonight. And I'd be a fool to try to get up That's here right. and, uh, and, and say, all right, now let's open our Bibles and da-da-da. And that, right. that, that may come, that may come, but, right. I, agree, but I, I really, really uh, feel like they need to sing, sing a little bit more. And it could be tonight God's trying to deal with some people. Mm-hmm. I don't know what about. Yeah. I mean, you, you do realize that the Holy Spirit can do a yeah. work without yeah. me being up That's here. Right. And, and we're all Bible believers, so it's yeah. not like I've got to get up here and preach to you for God to deal with you about something. Yeah. Now, preaching is the way God gets stuff right. done, right? right? But you know enough Bible right, that God can already take what you already yeah. know and say, yeah. hey, man, he ain't got to get up there and scream and holler for 30 minutes yeah. for you to know what's going That's on right, right. now. Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I agree, brother. Good. I don't know if you're dealing with something. I don't know if you've got a sin problem going on. I don't know if it's a trial. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on. Hey, listen, there, it might be. I don't know. I'm not one of these preachers that tries to make everybody doubt their salvation. Right, if you right, say, right. if you saved, you saved. That's right. Right, brother. Well, I don't know. You know, people say the greatest mission field in the world is a Baptist church. I fully on that jump. Yeah, amen, brother. Go ahead. But it could be not somebody's here and you say, preacher, you know what? If I was to die right now, I don't yes. think I'd go to heaven. I'm lost. Hey, listen, now now, right now, would be a perfect time yes, for you to just get yeah. up and say, you know what, I need to be saved. Yeah. Jesus Christ right. died on the cross for you, yep. rose again the third day, died for your sins, yep. and all you've got to do is believe and trust in him, call upon him, and he'll save you. You say, yeah, but there's people who think I'm already saved. What are they going to think if I go down there and get saved? Yeah, I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to yeah. do. We're going to yeah. think hallelujah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought they was already saved. What's all that? You know, I've never seen that happen, not in there one time. Right, bro. Go ahead. Boy, I, I tell you, I really feel like the Lord is yeah. wanting to do something yeah. here tonight. So I'm going to get out of the way. Y'all, so I don't care what you sing. If you, hey, listen, if you need to come tonight, right. don't you let the devil yeah. keep you in your seat right there. Yeah. Don't you let the devil convince you that I just stay there. He needs to preach. Y'all had him in here to preach, and he needs to get up and preach, and this needs to happen and that. No, let's just let the Lord do some stuff here tonight. Amen?
think I'm going to preach and uh, now listen if you didn't move at the end of the sermon I'll give one more invitation now you better be careful about these people that say God told me anything yeah, right, right, right. the only thing God ever told you is written in this book right now you better be careful about that stuff right, 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 right. a lot of times God tells people stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, they're just using it to kind of wield their power People come to me and say, Brother Sluter, I, I, you know, God, God told me I need to go do this. It'll be some off-the-wall thing. Well, I, kind of, I answer them like Brother Peacock. Okay, well, then why are you come and counsel with me if God told you to do it? Why are you asking my opinion if God told you? I can't compete with him. Yeah. Have at it. But I feel, I feel maybe there's somebody that still needs to move. I have no idea. And at the end of the service, when we give the altar call, if you didn't come, I want you to come then. God dealing with your heart, okay? All right, let's take our Bibles, go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 9. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9. I'm not going to be long. I realize the Lord's already moved and worked, and uh, so I'm not going to be long tonight. But I do have probably one of the most unusual messages that I have ever <coughs> preached. I, this is Usually I, I tell people this when I, when I go out, especially if I'm at a new church I've not preached in. I always try to preach messages at my place first. First of all, I don't want my people to think that they're getting the leftovers. Right. I do a lot of traveling, a lot of preaching, and so I always want my people to know that I'm studying for them first and everybody else second. 
Uh, but second of all, if it flops, <laughs> I know not to preach it out, amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so this is a brand new message, uh, and, uh, and hopefully y'all going to be the guinea pigs tonight, amen. But I'm writing a book right now. I'm taking Brother Peacock's Bible College, and I'm, uh, I'm in the master's program, and I'm writing a, a thesis, and I'm going to uh, be putting it in a book, printed out in a book, um, on Calvinism. And, uh, and in, today I was studying uh, this subject for my thesis. I'm almost done with it. I've got to have 50,000 words, and I'm sitting right, around, right under 43,000 words right now. And uh, I began to look at this thing today for my book, uh, for my thesis, and the Lord began to work on my heart with this thing. So if this is the craziest, most, most off-the-wall thing you've ever heard, just smile at me and nod, and I'll never know the difference, and then y'all can you know, uh, deem me as a heretic afterwards and all that good stuff. But look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9 tonight. Look at there at verse number 11. Let's all stand for just a moment as uh, we read God's word together. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9 and verse number 11. Notice what Solomon says here. He says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. Notice this phrase now, but time and chance happeneth to them all. For man also knoweth not as time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. I want you to notice the last phrase of verse number 11 where it says, But time and chance happeneth to them all. Now we're King James Bible believers, right? Amen. I used to say, even up till recently, I used to say things like, I don't believe that anything happens by chance. Mm -hmm. yeah. But my King James Bible begs to differ. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't try to go to the Hebrew and find out how to wiggle my way around it and try to figure out what the, uh, you know, what the original meaning is and all that kind of stuff. I just sat there and said, well, Lord, I've been wrong. Because the Bible says that time and chance happeneth to them all. I want to preach to you a message tonight simply entitled, What Are the Chances? Yeah. What are the chances? Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be in church tonight. God, this is an unusual message, and Lord, I really do fervently need your help in order to accurately portray the thoughts that you've given me uh, for these people tonight. Lord, I pray that you bless and move. Thank you for what you've done already in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. <clears throat> now, we're going to do a little Bible study just really quick here, and then we'll get into the preaching. I know, listen, we've already been in church a little bit longer. The singing went a little bit longer than normal, so I'm not going to keep you all night. But I really do feel like that this message might help somebody. It's helped me. I want you to notice, first of all, here about what are the chances. We have this damnable heresy known as Calvinism that has, for whatever reason, resurfaced and reared its ugly head. Uh, I have friends of mine, I have uh, preacher friends that I used to preach with and for who've got caught up in the heresy, and that's what it is. It is heresy. Uh, it is not just a difference in doctrine or a agree to disagree type of deal. It is heresy, uh, but they've got caught up in this thing. Uh, there have been men that have slipped into our independent Baptist churches, and they have got, uh, beguiled the people and sucked people in. I had a guy in my own church, my song, a song leader in Sunday, school teacher several years ago and uh, we even sent him out to start a church. He got caught up in Calvinism. He followed that road. Now he's a assistant pastor up in Pennsylvania of a Calvinistic Methodist church that sprinkles babies. It's a damnable heresy. And one of the facets of that damnable heresy is this thought. Now, now stay with me here. You ready? Don't, don't, don't get nervous. But one of the Errors of Calvinism is the idea of the sovereignty of God. Now stay with me. All right, sovereignty is never mentioned in the Bible one time. 
the word in any of its ways, sovereign or sovereignty, it's never mentioned one time in your King James Bible. The Bible never calls God sovereign. In fact, the word sovereign more than likely comes from a French word uh, meaning king or ruler. This, uh, the Bible never puts this title on God. Now listen, I have no problem saying that the Lord is king, amen? I have no problem saying that he is the ruler. But what has happened is this Calvinistic idea of sovereignty has corrupted our viewpoint of how the Lord works. See, if I say, most people, and if you say sovereignty, I'm not saying you're some kind of evil heretic and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm saying is, is we have this idea of sovereignty and these Calvinists have influenced our churches enough to where we say, well, yeah, uh, uh, God causes all things to happen and, and all things happen because of God's plan. That's not Bible. God does not will that any should perish. But obviously men do perish. Okay? God, listen, a true Calvinist, now I don't have time to go through my whole book with you tonight, amen? But a true Calvinist, I've got the quotes, I've got the receipts, amen? I mean, I've got all the books. I read 13 Calvinist books. Not books by non-Calvinists about Calvinism. I know about, I read 13 books by Calvinists about Calvinism. I should get a stinking medal for that, okay? I mean, somebody ought to buy me a steak supper for that, amen? And I've got all the quotes. A true Calvinist not only believes that God allowed Adam and Eve to fall, but that God in eternity past foreordained and predestinated Adam and Eve to fall. A true Calvinist believes that every single action done by every single man, regardless if it's good or bad, is foreordained. And see, what happens is, is we begin to get this idea that God causes all things and all things, uh, you know, are, are, are exactly what God... Charles Spurgeon even said that the dust floating in the air is there by divine decree of God. The problem is, the problem is, is this idea of sovereignty. We begin to think, well, all things are happening because God wants them to happen. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says, well, well you, know, uh, you know, God has a plan for everything. Now, we'll get to that in the later part of the message, but hold on. The Bible literally says here that there are things that simply happen by chance. Amen. Well, Brother Sluder, what does chance really mean? Well, according to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, chance means it happens uh, uh, arbitrarily, it happens by chance, it's happenstance, it just happens, it befalls. It's just total randomness. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Well, there is no randomness with God. Hold on a second. What does your King James Bible say? Yeah, amen. I didn't say that everything was in chaos. I didn't say that God wasn't in control. I didn't say, but listen, God is powerful enough and he is supreme enough where he doesn't have to dictate every little thing that happens in the universe. Sovereignty is not a Bible word, but free will is. Right. You have a free will. These bunch of Calvinists go out there and you ask him, you really ask them, you say, do you think that God willed for a man to rape a woman? You ask them, they, you get down to it, they'll, if they're honest with you, very few of them are honest, uh, they'll, say, uh, they'll say, yeah, I believe that God willed for that woman to be raped. I believe that God willed for that baby to be aborted. Hogwash on all that mess. I no more believe that as much as I believe I can tote this building across the street, amen. Hey, God does not will that. God is not the author of sin. Yeah, amen. Notice the first mention of the word chance is in Deuteronomy 26. And it's interesting. You ever heard, and I want to be careful here. I don't want to seem too worldly or, 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 or gross or anything. But you ever heard that, you know, what are the chances? And, and uh, I remember I was walking through uh, the, the woods one day, and this is a true story, and a bird flew over and, um, and released its dinner right on my arm. And you've heard that old saying, you know, uh, there's a better chance of a bird pooping on your head, amen? You ever heard that? 
Well, so guess what? God, literally the first time the word chance is ever used, he said if you find a bird in a nest that's fallen, he says if it happens by chance to be in front of you, you can take the eggs and you can take the young, but leave the dam is what it says. That comes from the word damsel. He says leave the dam there, the, the mother bird, because we don't want evil, to, unless evil happens to you, you'll live long if you leave the mother alone. Now, there's probably a whole nother message in all that. But what I'm saying is, is God said there's going to be things happen to you by chance. But it is up to your free will. Now, here's what happens if something happens to you by chance. Take the eggs out of the bird nest, but don't kill the bird. You say, what in the world does that have to do with me? Because listen, folks, there are going to be things that happen in your life. They're just going to be by chance. It's not because you're an evil person. It's not because God hates you. It's not because the devil's out. We blame the devil for a lot of stuff he doesn't do. I mean, the devil gets a lot more credit than what he's worth. Amen. Well, the devil's just after my family. It, really? Or is it just that y'all don't y'all ain't been in church all? Anyway, anyway. The devil's just fighting me real bad, preacher. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. We ain't reading your Bible. We ain't praying. You ain't been to church in three weeks. Maybe it's not the devil. Why is it getting quiet right there? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Now notice 2 Samuel 1, 6 says the young man that found uh, Saul, he said, I was by chance on Mount Gilboa. Pro, excuse me, Luke chapter 10, verse 31, Jesus is given the parable of the, uh, of the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, and it says, and by chance, the priest walked by the way. It was just by chance. How about this one? Ruth chapter number 2, verse number 3, the Bible says that she happed to be happed. That means happenstance. Just, it just so happened to be that Ruth just so happened to have been gleaning in the fields of Boaz. Hey, sometimes the things that happen to you by chance, sometimes they're good. Sometimes you just happen to be in the field of Boaz. It ain't because you were some kind of goody two-shoes and God says, boy, you've just been extra good this week. How about a little bit of... No, listen, it rains upon the just and the unjust. Well, I've just got it so bad. Why is it that all... Why does it seem like all the lost people have so much fun and good time and all the, lost, and all the saved people have a bad time? Listen, there are plenty of lost people going through bad stuff. It rains on the just and the unjust. Notice, sometimes things just happen. Sometimes the chance is good. Sometimes, sometimes you hit the lottery, amen? I kind of believe like Billy Kelly, if one of my church members wins the lottery, they say, would you, would you take that money if one of your church members hit the lottery? Absolutely, the devil's crowd had it long enough, amen? We'd church them, but we'd be real easy on them, Amen? <laughs> Sometimes, now listen, sometimes the chance is bad. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse number 10 says that sometimes there is an uncleanness that takes a man by night. Sometimes there are things that happen to you and it says that that man becomes unclean by chance. Sometimes, listen now to me, I'm going to try to help you. This is where the message is really coming in. You ready? Sometimes there are things that happen to you. There's an uncleanness or there's a disease or a sickness or a situation. It's not that God, well, what is God trying to teach me through? I understand you try to be spiritual and you try to look at the bright side, but folks, can I just be honest? Sometimes things just happen because we're living in a messed up world. I mean, sometimes things just happen. It's not because there's some kind of deep divine reason. It's not because you're an evil person. It's not because God's trying to judge your family. It is simply because you are living in a messed up world. Listen, Mental problems are raging right now. And here's the problem. Listen to me now. Here's the problem. Some of you are sitting there and you're trying to figure out, if you're like me, man, my mind is my worst enemy. 
and things happen to you. Now stay with me here. I'm going to help you now. Things happen to you and you sit there and try to figure out, okay, why exactly did this happen? And what's the moral here? And what's God trying to show me? And is this a sign for this? And what's going on here? And you try to analyze that thing down to the T and guess what happens? You get no closer to figuring out why you're going through what you're going through because it just happens by chance. And so listen, we are living in a society where we're eating processed foods with polluted air, polluted water. I won't get into all that tonight, but we're looking there at devices all the time, looking at screens, stress and all this kind of stuff. And what's, you're, listen, you're eating cursed food out of a cursed ground that's going into a cursed body. And so guess what? If you try to sit there and try to figure out every little thing that happens to you, the devil's going to have a heyday in your mind. Oh my gosh, this happened. What does that mean? Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm sick right now. What does that mean? It probably maybe you ate some bad shrimp. I don't know. I broke my arm. What is God trying to say? Uh, don't go skateboarding anymore, you know. Can I, can I, can, now the Bible says confess your faults, not your sins, your faults. Yeah, right. I'm going to confess a fault. Last night is about, we, we watched the Carolina game. <laughs> By chance, yeah. Baycock hurt his ankle yeah. and uh, all that kind of stuff. You sh y'all shut up. I don't want to hear a word out of y'all. We, listen, we won Saturday night against that devilish team. Amen. Well, man, Brother Tuggle, I feel a touch right there. But after the game last night, we went out and, and, and uh, me and these two boys in the back and were with me. And I said, let's hit the McDonald's. And I went and I got a Big Mac at McDonald's. And I also got a McChicken and also got a McDouble. <laughs> but I didn't eat the fries, so it evened out. It, it evened out. I didn't eat the fries. No, I didn't get a Diet Coke. If I'm going to drink a Coke, I'm going to drink a real one, praise God. And you know what? I woke up this morning and I didn't feel the greatest. <laughs> yeah. You say, well, oh God, what are you trying to tell me? I ain't trying to tell you nothing. We play dumb games, win dumb prizes, amen. Now here's what I'm trying, here, listen now, here's what I'm trying to get at you. Quit trying to analyze every single thing. Listen, you may never figure out why what happened to you happened. Listen, sometimes things just happen by chance and you've got to quit trying to overthink and trying to analyze. And what happens is, is we begin to put guilt on ourselves for the things that happen. Listen, when things happen to you and you try to put guilt on somebody, you're either going to put it on yourself or you're going to put it on God. And here's the logic, and I know you've used this logic because I've used this logic. Well, you know, God, uh, God caused this to happen, and God made this happen, and God took my dad home early, or God took my son home early, or my daughter, or God made me have cancer, God made this, and God, well, and then we'll say, no, no, God didn't make that. Well, he sure could have stopped it, couldn't he? See, that's what you've got to understand. God is in control and all that, but the Bible says that there are things that happen by chance. Sometimes people are just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it's not that it's out of God's control. It's just that we can't delve into the mind of God. Is everybody with me? Is everybody with me tonight? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Watch this in the text here in verse number 11. We find first of all that sometimes chance excuse me, happens to the fast. That run the race, uh, excuse me, and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. Boy, if there's ever a Christian that is a good Christian, if there's ever a guy that's just, he's just awesome, an awesome athlete or whatever, and we say, boy, if there's anybody going to win the race, he's going to win the race, and then they wind up out of church. Or man, he ha he, he, he's got the ability, he is really going to be a great athlete, and he becomes paralyzed from the waist down. So why did that happen? Well, according to verse 11, time and chance happeneth to them all. Hey, sometimes 
in the fight. Sometimes you're fighting something, and uh, boy, listen, can I just be honest? I've seen many of people say, I'm, I'm going to fight this, and I'm going to win, and I'm going to do and then they wind up losing horribly. Oh, man. What was wrong? I wonder what, and you better be careful with this. Something happens, a tragedy in somebody's life happens, you sit there and say, huh, I wonder what secret sin they were hiding. Oh, you better be careful with that junk. Because if we're going to be honest, you've got secret ones too. You better be real careful about that junk, man. Well, that wouldn't have happened. That, that, I, I, I know that God wouldn't allow that. You don't know what God would do. Listen, our God sitteth in the heavens and he hath done whatsoever he listeth, amen. He does what he wants to and he ain't got to ask nobody's opinion or, uh, or input about it, amen. The fight. Hey, notice not only that, but look at the food. Yet bread to the wise. Sometimes, sometimes things just happen. Listen, sometimes you just fall on hard times. How about this one? We see the fortune. Nor yet riches to men of understanding. Hey, can I tell you this? My father owned his own business back. I mean, he, he started when I was in elementary school. Ran it all the way, and then my ninth grade year, which would have been around uh, 2007, I think. Well, I can't remember exactly. 2007, I think. And, uh, and he had, that was right before the big economic crisis in 2008. He owned a car dealership. And he had a business partner that embezzled over $350,000 from him. He tried to recover, tried to do everything. Long story short, on top of that, the 2008 crisis hit, and he ended up having to file bankruptcy. We lived in a five-bedroom, three-and-a-half-bath house, two acres of land. We had, I mean, we were well off when I was growing up. We went to a 1,000-square-foot farmhouse renting it, and we lost the cars, everything. When I was 14 years old. You say, wow, what, why? Well, sometimes the riches just seem to fly from you. Sometimes financial devastation comes. Time and chance happens to them all. How about this one? Favor. Look what it says. Nor yet favor to men of skill. Boy, I'm telling you what, our country's a dead giveaway for that right now. It shows that in order to get favor, you don't have to have any skills. You can, run, you can be the President of the United States not have no skills in today's time, Amen. Now, hold on, I'm almost done. See, here's what ends up happening. Because we focus on this thing, we forget this thing, and we, we've kind of let this idea of chance fall by the wayside, what ends up happening is we begin to get misunderstandings of how God works, like I said previously. So watch this. I've already mentioned it. We begin to think that the sovereignty of God is something. If you try to look at the fact that God causes all things and wants everything that happens, that happens, and, and he's the cause, you begin to see a cruel God that does not care what happens to you. Number two, so you have a, a bad view of sovereignty. Number two, now hold on, I'm really going to hair lip some of you. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to hair lip you and then help you. You ready? Number two, you began to get a misunderstanding of signs. Well, if God wants me to do this, he needs to make this happen. Hey, can I... Can I, I know some of y'all been here. I know you have, and you can lie about it if you want to. But I remember I, I went through several, several years ago when I was a teenager, I went through a bad spell of doubt in my salvation. And a lot of people do that, especially kids like me that get saved at a young age, never done anything bad. You know, that, that's a common thing. And doubting does not mean somebody's lost. Amen. And so I got my license. I know y'all, I know some of y'all done this. I got my license when I was 16, and boy, I'd start doubting. I'd be on the way home from somewhere. I said, Lord, if I'm saved, let this light turn green before I get to the line. <laughs> I can tell by the laughter. <laughs> Please, Lord, if I'm really saved, let... and you know what? Sometimes the light would turn green, and I'd be like, hallelujah. And I'd say, all right, now, Lord, let it happen again on this next one. And then it'd be red. God, I'm lost. Amen. Amen. We do that though, don't we? Listen, I understand that Gideon laid out a fleece, but you ain't Gideon, you ain't in the Old Testament, and you ain't leading an army against no Assyrians, amen? Or Midians, excuse me. Okay? We get a skewed 
well, this happened, so what is God trying to say? What is God trying to say? Listen, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. The Jews require a sign. Last time I checked, we a bunch of converted Gentiles in the body of Christ. The only sign that you have tonight, the only thing that you can rest your stake in is right here in your lap, amen. Hey, uh, I don't know what things mean and you can try to decipher stuff and you can try to look at all these things, but at the end of the day, feelings come and feelings go and feelings are deceiving. My warrant is the word of God, not else is worth believing. Amen. See, what ends up happening is you get this misunderstanding and you think that God begins to speak to you in all these mysterious ways because of all these things that happen. So then what happens is you start to get misunderstandings about not only the sovereignty of God, not only signs, but situations. Huh. Well, this happened and that happened and this happened. My God, this must be that this is going to happen and that's going to happen. See, the devil wants you to sit there and overanalyze everything. Overanalyzation is not a sign of faith. It is the exact sign of the opposite. It's like a ro listen, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it don't take you a place. But preacher, I, can I just be honest? I'll have people come to me. Now, I'm talking about, Brother Tucker, I'm talking about Good to see you and your family, by the way. Glad y'all came. I have Bible believers, Brother Togo, Bible believers that'll come to me and say, Preacher, I had a dream about this, 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 and this. What do you think that means? I think it means you ate too much pizza before right. you went to bed. Or McDonald's. Well, no, not I'm, I'm preaching around here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, man, pray for me about that McDonald's. Or Brother Togo, this is what they'll say. They'll say, Brother Sluter, I had a dream about something awful and I don't know where it came from. And, and preacher, I just don't understand in this dream. And I'll say, okay, join a club? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Preacher, I had this thought run through my mind and it's so bad and awful and I don't know where it came from. Oh, yeah. yeah, join a club. Amen. But what does it mean? It means you had a weird dream. It means you had a random thought. You study psychiatry or psychology, don't get too deep in that stuff, but I've dabbled in a little bit looking at it. And you know what? Your mind is a weird, strange entity that you cannot trust. Your mind will turn on you and be your worst enemy. That's why you can't focus on what's... Well, I, I'm having these dreams and I'm having these thoughts and these feelings and these inclinations. That, and listen, I understand you want to follow the leadership of the Lord and some of that happened tonight and all that. But you got to be careful because sometimes things just happen by chance and you begin to misunderstand entire situations because you're trying to look for some kind of deep meaning. When God says, listen, quit trying to look for deep meanings when you ain't even looking in the book. Right. Oh, I think God's speaking to me. Really? Where at? Where did he speak? Oh, no, 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 not in the Bible. Well, then I wouldn't lay too much claim in that. I'm making sense to everybody tonight? I'm almost done. Now, you ready? People say things like, well, I just want to know the will of God. Do you know that over eight times in the Bible. There are eight specific things in the Bible that God literally says is the will of God. Amen. It is the will of God for you to be saved, 2 yeah. Peter 3, 9. It is the will of God for you to serve, Romans 12, 2. It is the will of God for you to be sanctified, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. It is the will of God for you that you can just go, go through. It is the will of God for you to give thanks. There are things clearly... You say, well, I just, I just want to know the perfect will of God for my life. I think that we... I'm going to be honest with you. You can disagree with this if you want to. I think we've made this will of God stuff so mysterious. Well, preacher, I, I, people come to me and say, well, I, I just, you know, I just want to know the will of God for my life. Okay. Here's what I tell people. And I understand I want to be sensitive about that stuff. But here's what I tell people. 
I'll say, okay, are you, as far as you know, I'm not saying you're perfect, but as far as you know, are you right with the Lord? Yes. Are you reading the Bible? Yes. Are you going to church? Yes, sir. Okay, so everything's good between you and the Lord? Yes. Do you have a sincere desire to do something for God? Yes. Okay, and you think that you just having a misunderstanding or just making some kind of wrong step is going to completely ruin and debacle your whole Christian life? That ain't how it works, man. God's big enough to overcome the, the faults and the failures that you have. So watch this now. I'm done. Look, I'm closing my Bible. I'm done. You ready, though? Watch this now. Here it is. You say, preacher, do things happen by chance? Oh, yeah. You say, preacher, are, are there things that just happen for no rhyme or reason? Absolutely. And here's what you have to understand tonight. God does not cause all things that happen to you. He does not cause everything that happens to you. But listen to me tonight. Whether it be good or whether it be bad, here's where we lay our stake. You ready? Romans 8, 28. I don't know why everything happens. I don't know why certain things go on in your life. I don't know why marriages fall apart. I don't know why people get in car wrecks and die. I don't know why mothers lose babies in the womb. I don't know why certain things happen and go on. I don't know. Some of them, some of them probably, Brother Togel, just happened by chance. But I do know that all things... It does not say, Brother Tucker, that all things are good. No. It does not say, listen, it does not say to praise God for everything. It says in everything. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yes, sir. So hold on now. I don't know why everything happens, but I know that all things work together for good. Amen to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. So I don't know why you're going through it. It may have been by chance. It may have just been a freak thing. But regardless of how bad it is, God can take that situation and somehow in his divine love and his divine providence, he can work that thing out for your good. And you get to the other side of that thing. Listen, hindsight's always what? 2020, right? And you get back to the other and you say, man, I sure didn't understand. There was a whole lot of weird things happening. Boy, my mind sure was playing tricks on me. And boy, all this stuff sure was crazy at the time. But Lord, I can see now what you had for me. And I can see now what you brought me through. And boy, I'm glad, Lord, that it happened, whether by chance or by your plan or a little bit of both. Amen. I'm just glad that I know that you've got it all under control. Amen. Am I making sense to anybody tonight? Amen. Here it is. You ready? Time and chance happens to, to them all. And some of you, you're driving yourself crazy trying to figure it all out. I've been there. You ever, you ever laid in bed at night and felt like you was going crazy? The anxiety. And I'm not talking about you had a stressful day at work. I'm talking about something that almost feels supernatural attacking you. The anxiety and the depression and the thoughts. And you saying, I love my wife and children but I just got to, I, I want to leave. I just want to get in my car and go till the gas runs out. Or you say, a uh, woman will say, I love my children. I'm a mother and I love them. But my goodness, why do I just feel like I'm going crazy and I just got to get out of here? Why is it that I feel this way? And what you have to understand, it's because you're trying to figure out everything that happens. I know this sounds so cliche, but you've just got to let go and let God. And say, Lord, I don't understand what I'm going through. I don't agree with what I'm going through. I think that this is cruel and unusual. But I know that when me and you disagree, I know who the idiot is. So I'm just going to keep trusting you. Amen. 
every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. If I could have my piano player come back to the piano. Some are already coming now. I want to ask you a question tonight. I know this may seem unusual and this message I may, have, may have been out in left field, I don't know, but would there be anybody here honest enough to say, Preacher, if I were to die right now, I don't think I'd go to heaven. Nobody's looking around. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you in any way. I just want to pray for you. Would you just raise your hand right up and right back down, Preacher, that's me. Would you pray for me? Preacher, I don't think I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Anybody like that tonight? All right, let me ask you a second question. I mean, you say, Preacher, I'm going to be honest. Boy, I've been right where you're preaching at. I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm trying to figure everything out. This situation happened, and I feel guilty, and I'm trying to blame myself, or I'm blaming somebody else, and maybe you're even blaming God. And, Preacher, I don't understand, but now I understand tonight, Preacher, that some things just happened by chance, and it's not anybody's fault. They just happened. Would you say, Preacher, that's me. That boy, hand's already going up. Preacher, that's me. I see those hands. Hey, listen, I'm going to get out of the way. If you need to come tonight, why don't you come? Get in this altar and talk to the Lord about some things. Father, I love you. I pray for those that raised their hand, those that didn't raise their hand. Lord, that you'd move people out of their seat and get them down to this altar. We love you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. tonight, there's some of you out there going to drive yourself crazy, just not giving it to God, just being honest, say, I have no clue, I have, I do not understand, I'm just going to trust you, quit trying to figure it out, you're driving yourself nuts, and God just give you an answer tonight, just give it to me, his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways, he's way above us. I don't see one thing saying, God, what you doing right here? If he don't tell you, just trust him. 
Just dump it on him. He can tote it. He can handle it. We can't handle it. We can't carry it. That's why we popping pills and dope trying to keep sanity when we just lay it at the foot of Jesus and he can take care of it. Just give it to him tonight. Don't you miss this simple, profound truth tonight and leave here miserable when all you got to do is just give it to him. That's, you know, it all kind of goes back to the roots of salvation. About everything, don't it? You know what you did? You just came to God filthy, undone, and couldn't do it. He had to do it. Yeah. That same principle helped your whole life. God, I don't know. I can't do it. But I know you can. And I'm just going to trust you. Amen. You give me an understanding of it, glory be to God. If I get no understanding of it, glory be to God. He's glorified anyhow, amen. Chance or happen, whatever, God, I'm just going to believe you. I'm just going to serve you. You've been too good to me. Stop fighting it. They go sing this last verse. Don't worry about what nobody thinks about you. Don't worry about what somebody going to say. Don't worry about getting you some sanity tonight. Get some peace down in your heart and be able to lay down tonight and say, you know what? God, you got this. Matter of fact, you had it all along. I just didn't realize it. I just need to that simple because of shape. Let it go. Let go and let God. That is true. Amen. Come. book's got the answer on it. Amen. Just depend on it. Thank God. Good preaching, preacher. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That'll help you. Amen. That'll help you. That's what God wants to do. Amen. That's what we've been praying for. Amen. God to help us. Yes, right. The only condition is when he throws it out there, take it and eat it. Yeah, amen. Amen. God spreads the table. Amen. He just wants you to pull up and eat. Amen. Don't get that spirit of, well, that ain't what I like. I was hoping they'd fix something else. No, you ask God to prepare the table, you just dig in and eat. Yeah, amen. Eat it when you understand it, when you don't, and just trust him. Because it's going to be good for you, amen. amen. Sometimes you have to do that and just let it go on down. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Swallow it, man. It's good. That's right. It'll help you, amen. Appreciate it, amen. We're going to ask the preacher to go to the back. Me and my wife head that way. We're going to dismiss in prayer. Don't forget about service tomorrow. Thursday and Friday, all the other things going on around the church. Pray for these other preachers to be at their place of worship tomorrow. God will bless and help them also. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's all dismiss them. Brother, how about dismissing?